Ethiopia is a country of contrasts. It has mountain highlands, lush swamps, and dry savannas. And in the middle lies a land that contains all of these in one small arena. Awash National Park is part desert and part oasis. One primate that thrives here is as multifaceted as its home. The Hamadryas baboon. Under the leadership of their alphas, they move through the many faces of their habitat, confronting both the land and each other on daily migrations through the park. These are the Hamadryas of Awash. Eleven million years ago, powerful geological ruptures tore apart Africa's eastern plain, leaving a fissure running down the length of the continent. The Great Rift Valley. Formed by violent tectonic movements and volcanic eruptions, it has created environments that are both hostile and beautiful. In its northeastern corner is a country that stands as a testament to these opposing forces. Ethiopia is a land of extremes. It's home to mountainous highlands, vast river valleys, and arid deserts. And for each of these environments, a different primate can be found in its midst. These animals are some of the world's most adaptable characters, able to survive in anything from desert to swampland. The changes between each habitat are reflected in the makeup of the primate society that lives there. And there's one area where this can be witnessed in a single consolidated space. Awash National Park in the center of Ethiopia is both a wildlife haven and a cruel desert. In the dry season, less than three millimeters of rain falls a month. The land is dusty and sterile, relinquishing little for those who live there. But hidden within the park is a lush oasis. A natural utopia produced by the very same volcanic forces that shaped the surrounding wasteland. And it's here that one of Ethiopia's most iconic primates thrives. The Hamadryas baboon. Their home is both generous and severe. They too exist as a delicate mix of tenderness and hostility. Theirs is a world balanced by both gentle cooperation and brutal competition. As soon as the sun breaks the horizon, 
daily proceedings commence. The alpha males begin to gather and organize their harems. Hamadryas clans comprise several families, each led by a dominant male, and everyone is responsible for looking after each other. For the youngest members, the arrival of the new day means that they can resume their restless jostling, running and playing. But for the elders, the pace is considerably slower. The dominant males enjoy the attention of their family and tolerate the presence of their neighbors. Males share territory, but they do not share females. They are notoriously possessive and aggressive. Each alpha is constantly pampered by a collection of his prize females. A powerful male can hold on to his harem for as long as 10 years, and it's strength alone that determines the longevity of his reign. If a female even dares to look at another male, the consequences are dire. They bear the scars of male discipline, which often comes in the form of a sharp bite to the ear. Here, males are the kings. And their realm is in many ways as tough and exacting as they are. In most baboon societies, related females stay together and adolescent males disperse into other groups. But the Hamadryas are different. Here, males form brotherhoods from birth, which they continue to maintain. The whole social structure is centered around groups of alphas. They keep the group cohesion through their aggression. But this simple act of affection is equally important for this complex society. Grooming is an important indicator of dominance. Superior clan members are shown more affection than others. So being a female means that a lot of energy is spent trying to satisfy a male. But this will pay off when they need protection. The alphas will only defend their favorites in a fight. Grooming is a deeply political act, one that shapes the power structures of the entire clan. For this young mother and her newborn, the group dynamic is a source of both security and great stress. <laughs> There's little cooperative parenting in this society. Once the infant is born, it's largely the mother's responsibility to raise it.
and she must always maintain her loyalty to its father. Each morning, the leaders move their families from the cliff tops where they sleep and into the park below. The hazardous journey down is one that the entire clan must make. These cliffs are a safe haven, unlike the rest of Awash's stark landscape. And only the strongest Hamadreus clans get to enjoy them. The animals that inhabit the outer reaches of the park live a very different existence. Surrounding the cliffs is a vast expanse of barren grassland and scrub. Predators like lions and jackals travel through the harsh terrain. And with fewer than two days of rainfall during the dry months, the carnivores are not the only threat that the residents have to face. In the dry season, temperatures push 40 degrees Celsius. But even though little relief comes in the form of rain, the land makes up for it in other ways. The geological shifts and volcanic forces that have shaped the coarse landscape also created an unexpected byproduct. As lava continued to spill and then cool over the land throughout the millennia, it created a deeply porous igneous rock. Underground spring water filters through all year round, creating an oasis at the foot of the Awash cliffs. No matter what time of the year, this small pocket of the park remains lush. providing shelter, water, and food. These mountains have many gems, and the first meal of the day on their descent from the cliffs is a favored delicacy for the resident clan. Hamadryas baboons eat a variety of foods, and these treasured fruits are enjoyed by every member of the group. Clan's daily movements are dictated by the search for the right nutrition. As soon as day breaks at the top of the cliffs, they begin their passage through a wash to find more food. After their first meal of the day, the youngsters are injected with new energy. explore their world by tumbling through it. It's here that they discover the extent of their physical abilities. The clan is made up of multiple harems, 
each with their own infants. And all of the youngsters band together to enjoy the fun. They test their mobility against one another. And this is also how they sharpen their climbing skills. It's an education through revelry. But play is cut short by the elders, who must now lead the clan onwards to find other sources of food. Although the cliffs are bountiful, the Hamadryas baboons cannot live on palm nuts alone. To find the necessary grubs and roots to supplement their diet, they must move to the dry center of the park. cliffs is a risky move. Another clan may take the oasis if it's left undefended. But they have no choice. Every day they undergo a hurried morning forage, making sure that they leave their home for as short a period as possible. Led by the Alphas, they hastily comb through vast expanses of open space for the little nourishment they can find. But the baboons are not the only ones on the search for food. Warthogs are grazers that specialize in digging up roots that lie below the earth. They are suited to plowing through arid areas to find nutrients. They're good at withstanding heat which allows them to waste less moisture when cooling themselves. And this is what helps another awash species to cope with a dry habitat. Oryx can survive without needing to drink regularly. but they need vegetation that retains enough moisture to sustain them. 
Though comfortable in the dry center of a wash, this herd cannot stay in one place for long. They must move through the wasteland to find enough moisture-rich plants to nourish them. But it's not just the mammals on the search for moisture. Leopard tortoises live in the dry region of a wash, but they can't survive long without fresh water. So they must permanently quest through the sterile land to find it. But they do have a number of ingenious ways to cope with their habitat. Their high domed shell provides extra protection from the sun's heat. This allows them to spend more time in open habitats looking for food or water. Sometimes the Ethiopian heat can be too much, even for these well-adapted reptiles. When they wedge themselves in thickets, seeds in their droppings germinate under shade and protection, allowing new growth. This regeneration of plant life is a valuable contribution to all who move through this difficult landscape. There are other baboon families battling in the dry. Anubis baboons are some of the hardiest characters of the primate world. Able to survive in almost any terrestrial habitat they are well equipped to deal with the severity of a wash's desert plains. Their success as a species lies in their ability to live off almost anything, from thorns and shrubs to small mammals and reptiles. Even when the dry and sterile landscape provides little, they are able to sustain themselves. There's very little that Anubis baboons cannot and will not eat. Every day they join the other residents of a wash, threading through its arid stretches for whatever they can find. A little further to the north, a different story unfolds. Where the majority of a wash is a coarse and severe landscape, Ethiopia's Simeon Mountains are lush and generous. Cascades of cliff faces line the horizon, climbing 4,500 meters across the Ethiopian highlands. Moisture constantly moves through these high altitude buttresses ensuring that they stay green and plentiful all year round. In between the vast peaks, a myriad of life prospers. And the animals that live here enjoy a very different existence to those in a wash. Here there are no dry deserts or scarce plains. The heights provide water and food all year round, and every resident that lives among the peaks prospers because of this. Walia ibex frequent the mountain between two and a half thousand and four and a half thousand meters. The vegetation that an ibex needs to survive can only grow in this region of the simians. Ibex need a constant supply of water all year round. They depend heavily on the upper stretches of this natural cathedral to get this. They share this section of Ethiopia with another of its iconic primates. Oh. 
Geladus can be found in the Simeon Mountains above 1,500 meters. This is where the high protein grasses that they depend on for survival grow. Geladas are the only true grazers of all primates. Their diet is more like a cattle's than a typical baboon's. By shuffling forwards on their bottoms and pinching at tufts of grass with their highly opposable thumbs, they spend their days plowing through the high altitude grazing pastures of Ethiopia's highlands. The daily routines of the gelada and the hamadryas are markedly different. One relishes in the security of its plentiful mountain habitat, while the other must face a constant daily battle with its unremitting home. But a wash has two faces. It's both desert and oasis. These igneous rocks filter the spring water that supports the Awash inhabitants all year round. These marshes generate river tracts that feed into the park, quenching the parched land. And it's here that another, rather more mild-tempered primate species can be found. Grivet monkeys can only survive in lush woodlands and areas with constant water supply. As a result, they're restricted to the park's swamplands, unable to expand their range to the center of a wash. They spend most of their time in the trees, only coming down to the water to drink. The river is not without its dangers. The river banks on which the grivet monkeys live are also the hunting grounds for a far larger primordial predator. The Nile Crocodile. The monkey's small size makes them easy prey, so they're dependent on their acute senses to survive the dangers of the waterfront. By remaining in a state of hyper-awareness, they notice the predator well before it manages to get close enough, allowing them to retreat to the safety of the overhanging trees. Once the resident Hamadryas have had their fill, they cease their morning forage and return hastily to the cliffs. For the clan, their return is cause for celebration.
they find the cliffs unoccupied by other baboons. Now that they've led the group safely back home, the alphas can relax. The mothers may now spend more time tending to their offspring. Females tend to give birth every 24 months, and they dedicate the period in between to protecting and raising their young. When two years have passed, the little ones start to move around independently. For all of the clan's youngsters, the return to the cliffs just means more fun. Their tireless playing reaches explosive levels as they enjoy the return to their safe haven. These seemingly innocuous jostles are a precursor to a far more vicious tendency. Fighting ability and aggression are the biggest determinants in male social standing. This makes play fighting an important skill to master early on. Only the strongest will eventually hold a harem. For weaker peripheral males, finding a mate is a hard task. Female loyalty to the alpha is not a matter of choice, but rather of force. and other males must respect the alphas and their harems. If they don't, a fierce dominance battle may ensue. The only way that peripheral males are able to mate is in secret, away from the gaze of the alphas, or by successfully defeating a dominant male in a fight. Their home is difficult and sparse, and this often places the Hamadryas in conflict with one another. Any aggression in their social structure is born from necessity. Ah! 
Their northerly neighbors, the Geladas, inhabit a polar opposite environment, a place of plenty, and this has caused an entirely different approach to the way that they socialize. Hamadreus coalesce in conflict, the Geladas have chosen another method to keep their group cohesion. Here it's less often violence that guides the families, but rather affection. In the world of the Gelada, females own the throne. Females make the mating decisions that shape the whole group's power dynamics. They choose whether or not to empower the alpha males. As a result, it's the male that has to impress the female. Here, the alpha is not the strongest fighter, but the gentlest groomer. Two million years ago, the most common baboon species were the ancestors of the gelada, adapted to eat the verdant grasses of sub-Saharan Africa. As the climate dried over the course of the millennia, these grasses became restricted to the top of the Ethiopian mountains, and were replaced lower down by the much drier grasslands of today's African savanna. With the advance of the savanna came the Hamadryas baboons. They replaced geladas everywhere except for the uppermost regions of an Ethiopian stronghold in the mountains. Today, they exist as two opposing mirror image societies, one protected by a generous mountain habitat, the other restricted to the unyielding savanna. The first guided by females, the next dominated by males. One centered around peace, and the other maintained by violence. Nowhere is this violence more evident than when two Hamadryas clans have to share space. A rival group has arrived at the foot of the Awash cliffs. The resident alphas band together to form an offensive the strongest members will be called on in battle.
tensions run high. And the battle breaks out. Hamadryas scuffles can be violent. The fight is short-lived. The stronger resident clan has fended off the rivals. Peace returns to the cliffs. Their battle won, their oasis secure, the Hamadreus families begin their ascent to the sleeping sites. Their territory is secure. Fighting side by side to protect their small haven of a wash strengthens the bonds of the Hamadryas Alphas. Each day they rely on one another to defeat the challenges of the park. But the rewards are always worth the battle. The harems may now rest easy, confident in the fact that their sleeping sites have been successfully defended. And so they settle down for the evening, retreating to the safety of their mountainous fortress. drawing the curtain on another day in a wash. Ethiopia supports an array of wildlife kingdoms. These house some of the natural world's most striking and iconic species. The primates that exist here are as diverse as the habitats they live in. In Awash National Park, this variety is contained within a single consolidated arena. and the oasis at the cliffs is a fiercely contested prize. One that only the most dominant Hamadryas clans may procure. The resident alphas are responsible for providing for their families. To do this successfully, they have to roam the park in its entirety, threading through each of its habitats to find the right food. Unable to live in one landscape alone, their existence is split between two domains. Theirs is a union composed of tenderness and hostility. 
making them the bastions of a world that is both generous and harsh. Their daily battles with the land and with each other reveal a fascinating society, full of the struggle, triumph, and paradoxes of their home.